Hello everyone and welcome to Introduction to Number Theory. In this video we will discuss the Euclidean algorithm. Uh, an algorithm can be, could, uh, which could be applied uh, for elements of an Euclidean ring. So say that put A and B to be arbitrary elements of a Euclidean ring and of course suppose B is non-zero because otherwise uh, we wouldn't be able to uh, make even the first step of the algorithm. And the algorithm uh, assumes that we take A and apply division with the remainder to A and B divided by B. Say we have some Q1 plus R R1 and <coughs> the norm of R1, well, R1 is either zero or its norm is less, strictly less, than norm of B. Well, we need B to be non-zero because otherwise it uh, could have no norm. So the norm of R1 is less than the norm of B. And now the next step of the Euclidean algorithm we take B, divide it by R1. Of course, with a remainder, R2. And the norm of this remainder must be less than the norm of R1. Of course, this remainder could occur, occur to be zero. And in that case, it has no norm, but uh, when a remainder is equal to zero, the Euclidean algorithm stops. So as soon as we get zero in this place, the algorithm will stop. All other steps of the algorithm will be of the same form. Just notice that uh, this element goes here and the remainder goes here. And this is a new remainder. This element uh, doesn't go anywhere. These two go to these places and we obtain the new remainder. The third step of Euclidean algorithm would be the following. R1 we divide by R2 with a remainder R3. So once again this element goes here. This element goes here. Well, of course, remainder is also an element. And we have a new remainder. And this new remainder is either equal to zero or has a norm less than the norm of the previous one. Continuing in this way, just using division with the remainder, we see that norms of remainders, norm of remainders, is getting more and more less. It's smaller and smaller and smaller. But we know that it is an integer, a non-negative integer, norm of any element of Euclidean ring. So eventually this will have to stop. We cannot uh, decrease a positive integer, a non-negative integer, uh, infinitely many times. So eventually at some moment, we will obtain a step, there will be a step of Euclidean algorithm in which the remainder will be equal to zero. So R, say, k minus one uh, will be divided by Rk. We will have q k plus one over here. And uh, we will have a remainder r k plus one, but I will write zero just to emphasize that this is the end of the algorithm. Stop. Here the algorithm stops. Uh, we will further on discuss uh, why this algorithm is so useful, but let me just now show you an interesting property of remainders 
in this algorithm. The property is that remainders can be linearly expressed uh, via A and B. What does this mean? Well, this means that we take the first equation here, the first equality, and write that R1 is equal to A minus B Q1. When this is a linear representation of R1. Let me just remind you that a linear representation uh, is something of a form A x plus B y. Well, x and y are also elements of the ring. So R1 can be linearly uh, expressed through A and B. As for R2, we take the second line here and write that R2 is equal to B minus R1 Q2, but R1 is also already uh, represented linearly using A and B, so we write that R2 is equal to B minus A minus B Q1 multiplied by Q2 and just rearrange everything here and obtain A multiplied by minus Q2 um, <laughs> plus I believe here yeah, right plus B multiplied by 1 plus uh, Q1, Q2. Okay. So this is a linear representation of the second remainder. But continuing this way, we will obtain linear representations of all of these remainders. And we will use this conclusion about linear representation when, while proving the theorem about linear representation of the greatest common divisor. Stay tuned.